Good morning to you. Kenya Asante right now. Sana. Eh, Asante Sana, how did you get to learn that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I've been to Kenya several times, so um, I've learned that greeting. <laughs> All right, that's so interesting. So talking about Toronto, Canada, how is the situation right there? Well, we are going through the second wave right now, and um, God is with us. Uh, you know, uh, it's not as bad as it is uh, it, with our neighbor in, um, in the USA. Uh, but, um, you know, we are trying to do our best to keep the numbers down. And, um, you know, God is really the one who is helping us uh, as we stay in faith and prayer and let him lead and direct us. Indeed, indeed. That's so interesting. And that's all our hope. So... Uh, starting uh, with, I believe that you're such a spiritual uh, mom to many. And uh, let me know your, your favorite verse from the Bible. Well, uh, my, my favorite verse is uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I, I can, uh, the Lord is the one who uh, directs my plan. I have more than one. There's another s second favorite verse. But, um, you know... I know the plans that I have towards you, said the Lord, plans of good and not of evil, plans of peace and not of war, plans to give you a hope and a future. As long as we're in God's plan, that is the key thing, and that's what's important, that we're in his plan. The other one, it would be Philippians 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I like to quote those, put those two together. <laughs> Wow, that's so amazing. Indeed, you've mentioned God's plan, and that's uh, the song we played previously, I think, by the one and only Drake. It was such an amazing song, as I believe. So right, right about now, kindly let me know the purpose of uh, the K. Morris Foundation. The purpose of the K. Morris Foundation, our, our motto is the voice of the voiceless. And so we uh, carry out humanitarian missions, initiatives, in uh, Africa, predominantly Africa, the Caribbean, and other parts of the world. Wherever there is a need, uh, we advocate against uh, issues such as HIV and AIDS, and malaria prevention, uh, maternal mortality, uh, poverty. That's one of my biggest uh, advocacy area where, uh, you know, we deal with education as well. Uh, I have been into Kenya uh, several times. Uh, my latest visit to Kenya was in 2016, where I donated books and educational materials in Mathari slum at the Amsterdam Educational Center. And uh, also went over there into Naruk, uh, you know, to uh, donate some, uh, some, some items to the uh, all girls school over there in Maasai land. Uh, and so uh, the work across the continent of Africa is very extensive. And I give God all the glory for giving me the vision and the ability to do what he has called me and commissioned me to do. Wow, that's so interesting. In fact, I'm so shocked you are able to uh, memorize our, some of the towns you are able to visit uh, during your visit in Kenya. That's so interesting indeed. So uh, let me know kindly, why choose to be the voice of the voiceless? Is there any really a, a, a story behind that? Oh, absolutely. There are many people who have uh, like a mouth to speak, but they have no voice of their own. And I, I would have to say uh, folks who have a voice and cannot speak are people who are uh, marginalized, people who are, you know, in situations where they're not able to uh, make ends meet. Uh, you know, they're impoverished uh, and poverty is, is a real nasty thing. Uh, we see what poverty has done to many communities around the world. Uh, it creates uh, acts of violence. It creates uh, all kinds of uh, situations. Um, but I believe uh, being this voice, having this voice to be the voice of the voiceless, I'm able to help bridge the gap to poverty and um, you know, give people hope it's, it's more like giving hope and uh, showing the love of God. It's what Jesus would do uh, when he was here on earth. And so we are his extensions in the earth. We are 
uh, you know, his voice in the earth, the voice of God in the earth. And so this is why we have to be the voice of the voiceless. All right. That's so interesting uh, indeed. So you mentioned earlier you had, uh, you've been in Kenya and uh, you, uh, can I just say like you did community work service or something like that. So what did you love while you were at Kenya? Um, coming to Kenya for a few years, uh, I really love Nairobi. It's one of my favorite places. I, I mean, last time I was there, um, I came just before they, they had, you guys had that major uh, situation at the mall, uh, you know, where you went through, uh, you know, was that terrorist attack. And, um, you know, I, I was actually um, in that same mall after it happened. And they were showing me, uh, you know, my host, uh, Enos. Uh, and uh, one of my good friends, um, I don't know if you all know him, his name is Cedric Todwell. Um, we were all sitting down and dining in that same place. And I said, God, I mean, for you to have me come to the same place that just a few weeks ago had this, it, it you know, uh, I had to pray, uh, I had to cover the nation, you know, in my prayer. And, uh, and so, you know, it, it's, it's been like that. But Nairobi has been one of my, my, uh, my favorite spots to be. Wow, wow, wow. That's so interesting. That's so amazing for real. So uh, let me know, like, uh, what motivates uh, previously you've, mention what you're doing and according to me you're really doing a lot so what may what motivates your time management <laughs> that's a very interesting question because i've always been asked this uh, in terms of <laughs> in terms of time management uh, this is the way it goes because I wake up really early in the morning to facilitate interviews across the world as such as this. And, and so we're in totally, two totally different time zones. But with God, all things are possible. Uh, in a few hours, I will be, uh, after I go back to bed, I'll be waking up to go to uh, do my work project and, um, you know, uh, facilitate uh, Zoom meetings uh, because now I used to travel extensively but now I'm traveling via the internet. <laughs> so sure, everything sure. has been, I've been zooming, um, instead of on the aircrafts and zooming via the World Wide Web. And, uh, and so God has been good to me. He has been opening doors that man cannot shut. And I'm grateful to God for the opportunity, even with this new song, uh, to be able to be touching lives around the world with the greatest love story, which is the story of Jesus Christ and what he has done for humanity in giving his life for us. Wow, wow, amen, amen. That's a pure amen indeed. So, hey, mom, I can see that right behind you, you're having so many trophies. Can you just mention some of <laughs> the reasons why they are right there? Yes, uh, there are over 50 uh, music and humanitarian trophies uh, that I have uh, receive um, over a number of years and um, that has been bestowed on me honors uh, some are not directly there some are on the wall because uh, they're not able to to be posted there so these are just the standing ones but there I have a wall what you call a wall of fame where all of my music uh, you know uh, the ones that I get that are hanging they're just hanging on that wall and um, I have to say to God be the glory, I have been inducted in the Gospel Hall of Fame in 2010 and uh, in New York City. And, you know, I am very grateful to God for those people who have seen it fit to honor me. And uh, by all means, uh, the greatest honor is, 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 is what God honors me with is, is, to, is the gift uh, to, to sing music, to write music and to preach the gospel. And uh, that's the mandate that he has given me. And I have to say to God be all the glory. I could not have done it without him. He's the one who has empowered me and has gifted me. And so he gets the glory goes right back up to him. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 So <laughs> indeed, indeed. So maybe for those, uh, for the Kenyans who are watching you for uh, the first time, uh, 
we we are I'm aware that you are all the way from Jamaica but right now you are at Toronto Canada so what's the relationship be, between the two so I'm a Jamaican by birth I was born and raised uh, in Jamaica the island of Jamaica by two Pentecostal parents minister parents and I uh, I spent up to 18 in my first 18 years of my life in Jamaica and then migrated to Canada so I've been in, in Toronto, Canada for almost like, well, actually it is, this year is 40 years that wow. I've been here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's been, most of my life I've been spent here, but I've been traveling back and forth to go to Jamaica, uh, to my homeland, uh, you know, to see my family and also to do humanitarian work there in Jamaica as well. Wow, wow, that's so uh, interesting indeed. So our viewer, uh, wherever you must be watching from, there is GBS our Friday Entertainment, and there is how we do this. Each and every Friday at 7 a.m. or 8 to 10 a.m. So right about now, uh, we are live with the one and only K. Morris, uh, Dr. Uh, K. Morris, representing Jamaica to the world. Let me just say Jamaica for once. <laughs> and uh, so getting yeah, back to you, yeah, uh, Mom, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I want to know, like, uh, you are doing, like, a... Uh, I mean, you've done your, how can I say, your visit to many countries as well. You've traveled. And I want to know just uh, what's the real reason of, uh, or what's the cause of poverty or health issues as you have met so many people and associated with them, uh, orphanages being a uh, part of it? Well, based on what I see is that, uh, you see, the world has been... Uh, you know, <laughs> has been uh, compartmentalized and have, people have been treated poorly. Uh, society has set up these barriers. Uh, we have what you call first world. Uh, but for some reason or another, um, you know, you know, I, I cannot understand uh, for the life of me why Africa has to be considered a third world when Africa, most of the resources that even the first world is using comes out of Africa. So to me, you know, it's a lot of uh, injustices that have been done to cause poverty. And, uh, you know, some have been done through slavery, mental slavery and physical slavery uh, that has really caused a lot of these things, uh, a lot of injustices. Uh, that has caused people to be in that position. And uh, some people are, you know, I believe we are all born to be wealthy people because Jesus Christ died uh, to restore unto us what we lost uh, from Adam, uh, sinful behavior uh, in the Garden of Eden. We were, we were born wealthy people because God gave us wealth here in the earth. But uh, sin is what has caused uh, a major problem in, in, in the earth realm. And so we believe, uh, I believe personally that when we start to pray and navigate uh, things in the heaven realm, in, in the God realm, he will definitely change things and put us back in the right place that we ought to be. And so we see uh, with the slavery, uh, issues of slavery that took place uh, so many years ago, uh, you know, um, cause a lot of situations, people are taken out of their position, uh, people have their, their, their properties have been taken, uh, you know, things that should give you natural resources to make you wealthy has been controlled by other people from different countries. And so these are some of the things that I think has created a lot of these, these situations. And only God can really change that and we have to pray because I believe um, uh, Africa is one of the wealthiest continents on the earth. Most of the things in natural resources, minerals, uh, gold, diamonds, and I mean, you know, it makes no sense to me. And I'm being very open and honest with you. All right, all right. What a touching story. Anyways, let me just read one comment. Uh, is it really a comment? Uh, one of our fans, fans by the name Maureen. Maureen is watching from Naivasha. Naivasha is a part of Kenya as well. She's asking, now you're, you're, you're doing great works, especially traveling and visiting and uh, supporting the needy. Why did you decide to, uh, to get uh, into gospel industry as well? 
I was born uh, a singer. <laughs> God gave me that gift to sing. And at the age of four, that's when uh, my parents discovered that I could sing. Uh, very, very early age in my life, tender age of four. Um, uh, singing in huge conventions where my, my parents would take me, particularly my mother, she's the one who really pushed me uh, or tried to groom me and mentor me into this arena. Um, at that young age, I, I, I used to have some stage fright going up to sing in front of thousands of people. But as I grew older, the Lord allowed me to grow out of it and become more comfortable among the big crowds. And so as I grew, I, I realized one thing uh, in my earlier years as a teen is that I, I could sing, but uh, I needed to have that real one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. And so until I get to a place of brokenness, and started seeking God to be anointed. And, uh, you know, he appointed me at, at such time and gave me the mandate to sing. And professionally, I started uh, in 1994 when I formed the group K. Morris and the Jewels here in Toronto. Um, prior to that, I was singing as a soloist. But um, the group sort of having the group, we started making records and it, the music went worldwide. and. Uh, started touring uh, around the world and uh, you know the Lord gave me a mandate to take the music of my own native uh, country Jamaica change the message in the music and use it to win souls for the kingdom of God and I got this in a vision and so this is how where my my ministry really got birth in 1994 and they call me the pioneer of reggae music or the queen of, of reggae gospel here in Canada Wow. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. So I hope that uh, Maureen, uh, you've been answered, and she is also requesting how to get in touch of, uh, with you, of which I believe you're going to mention before we wind up. And again, I'm having the one and only Benson, watching from Westlands, Nairobi, Nairobi is asking, why don't you, why, why, why are you not getting back to Jamaica, maybe... Yeah, why are you not getting back to Jamaica, maybe for your facilitation for gospel uh, songs like this? Oh, I have, it's been played in Jamaica. I, I'm definitely having a very big presence in Jamaica. This song was released there. I did several interviews and radio there. And uh, my last time in Jamaica was 2018. But I must say that even in this 2020, uh, through the K. Morris Foundation, my my charity we were able to donate hospital beds and uh, ppes that's uh, you know for the doctors and the nurses to use uh, with the covid 19 uh, in response to the pandemic we were able to donate those items to uh, several hospitals on the island of jamaica and so even if i'm not there physically the work is still being done on the ground and uh, you know that, that I, because of my extensive traveling uh, to do ministry and music. I'm a preacher, I'm a singer, I'm a humanitarian. I have a triple ministry. <laughs> and okay. so, um, you know, too much room is given, much is required. But definitely, my work is really, really having great presence in the, in the island of my own birth. All right, all right, that's so interesting. So our viewer, keep them coming via SMS line to the one double four in the WhatsApp number, zero seven seven eight four four five five zero five. And then any question you feel that it should be addressed right now by the one and only uh, Dr. Uh, uh, K. Morris this morning, then she's going to respond uh, to you before we wind up. Uh, so getting back to... Uh, my guest uh, to this morning, I want to know, like, uh, you've uh, mentioned uh, really a lot, a lot, and I want to know, above all things, what, what, what can be your definition of a, a true happiness? Hmm. Wow, the only answer to that is Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes. uh, Jesus Christ, I believe, um, is our true happiness there's no happiness outside of god you know the, the bible says the joy of the lord is my strength and i would take it to joy because without joy you can't be happy you have to have a happy heart you have to you know believe that god has already done for you uh what what he says he's going to do and i find that a lot of people are sad because they're taking on uh issues that they should not be taking on 
uh, instead of turning over the issues to Jesus Christ and allow him to work them out. You know, they are taking on problems, they're taking on uh, situations, and we're not called to do that. We're called to pray. We're called to leave everything at the feet of Jesus Christ and to in have him intervene in, on our behalf and fix our situations. And so in the midst of all of our crises and, 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 and pandemics and whatever pandemics or whatever it may be, the case may be, we have faith and faith is really what brings joy to us as well because without faith it's impossible for us to please god without faith we can't do anything we serve a god first and foremost that we we have never seen before uh other than the disciples seeing jesus christ no man can see the face of god and live moses is a first one that came that close to seeing God, uh, but he could only see him from the back. He could not see God's face. And so it takes faith for us to really serve a God that we've never seen, but to believe his word, because his word is alive. His word is irrelevant. His word is a now word. And so once we can come into uh, you know, the, the realization that the word of God itself is life, it, 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 the word of God is lacking nothing. It, is, it has power. The, the, the Bible says, in, in Luke 10, verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And if we know that, that you know, our, our families and our enemies, what we call quote-unquote enemies, the people are talking about us, the people who are trying to prevent us from moving forward, if, you know, uh, nations that's rising up against uh, other nations, it is the devil who is behind all of these things. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And so we know that the only enemy we have is the devil himself. And if, if someone uh, opens up themselves for, to be used by the devil, to see the devil cannot operate out of things. He need a body. And, you know, even in the church today, we have so many issues where, uh, you know, we have issues of competition, you know, gospel artists, gospel ministers uh, of music, and even in the pulpit preachers, they're competing against each other. And this is a spirit. Uh, I mean, it's a Luciferian spirit. I like to address this because it's, a, it's, a, it's creating a lot of problems in the, in the gospel community. Indeed. And so we have to let people have to understand it's not about us. We are called to use our giftings to, to, to plunder hell and populate heaven, to win souls, not to compete against each other, but to use it to win souls. We have to come together in one. The body of Christ is one. Praise God. We are not divided. Any kingdom that is divided against itself cannot stand. And so because we are a part of Jesus Christ, we should do what he does. Because if the body starts fighting against uh, uh, each other, then we're going to have self-destruction. And so we have to be careful uh, as, as, a, as a church, whether we are here in Canada, Jamaica, uh, you know, Kenya, Africa, wherever we are, we are all extensions of Jesus Christ. And wow. so we have to come together and work together because we are one unit in God. Heaven is not divided. Uh, hallelujah. The only division is caused by the devil himself. And that's what we have to take a look at. Wow, wow, wow. This is so powerful, ma'am. I really wish that I could have like some more time so that you can bless Africa with uh, this powerful um, message from uh, you this morning. But okay, I'm yeah. having one of the fans who is so interested and is asking like, uh, why did you choose to do like, uh, uh, why reggae gospel? Okay, so as I said earlier, maybe he missed that part. Yeah. I, I, well, I didn't really explain, actually. I didn't go into in depth, but let me get into a little bit more uh, details. In 1994, I received a vision from the Lord. Uh, and in that vision, there were two reggae gospel songs that I was singing. And when I woke up out of the vision, I was praying and I was seeking the Lord. Because prior to that vision, I used to sing contemporary traditional gospel, uh, you know, like the Mahalia Jackson style and, and things like that. And, and so uh, when I received that vision, the Lord showed me those two songs. I woke up that morning, I recorded them on my tape recorder. Back then we used to have these little tape recorders because I didn't want to really forget the songs out of my head. And then I, I started seeking the Lord about this vision. 
and that's when you know the revelation came to me uh, to take the music, change the message within the music, because remember where music originate from. Music originate from heaven. Every genre of music came from heaven. See, the devil himself stole uh, music. And, and this is why even gospel ministers and gospel musicians have such a fight because Lucifer was in heaven. He was created to worship, praise God. And when he failed, God created man to replace him as worshipers. And see, God is looking for true worshipers, though that were, those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And so when I got that vision, that mandate to do that, I walked in the obedience that God gave me. I'm a type of Joseph. I got my vision and I and I took I held on to the vision. I, I got a lot of criticism at first for using reggae music in the church because everybody knew that it was a secular thing. Uh, most people know of reggae because of Bob Marley, uh, you know, out of Jamaica. But you know, I I embraced the vision, and believe me, my brother, when I started, my dear son, when I started doing this music. Some of the pastors came to me and they said, are you sure this was what God gave you to do? And I said, yes, I got this in a vision. And guess what? When the anointing, because you see, it's by reason of the anointing that yokes are destroyed. If God did not give you the vision, you cannot do it because with the vision, he gives a provision. The anointing started to flow through my life and ministry. And as I ministered on the stage in many churches, it started a movement. Young people's lives were being transformed. People's lives were changed. People were getting healed in their seats. I remember in, being in a concert one night and a lady came in uh, uh, in, a, in some kind of a wheelchair. And before she left the, the concert that night, she walked out of that wheelchair and she said to me, woman of God, as you were singing, there was something like a lightning bolt from you came to me. The anointing was so heavy. And she said she got up and started to dance. And you see, that these are some of the experiences that I've had with my ministry. And, you know, today, everyone is doing reggae gospel, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, so... If, if God didn't uh, anoint you to do it, then you can't do it. You All know, right. If God didn't send you, you can't go because then if you went, you might not return. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to be sent. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, we are so grateful to God who uh, was able to anoint you so that you can serve him uh, through uh, the gospel uh, reggae as well. So uh, right now, our viewer, wherever you must be watching from, there is GBS Friday Entertainment uh, right about now. We are live with the one and only Doc Arev uh, K. Morris representing Jamaica. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll yeah. uh, be part of a conversation hit us uh, across all social media platforms as GBS TV Africa, and then we'll be uh, getting right back to you before we wind up. So, right about now, uh, uh, getting back to the one and only uh, uh, spiritual mother to many, <laughs> I want to ask okay, I'm being told like we have in less than Two minutes, but before you wind up, I want to know, like, uh, what's the greatest, what's the greatest re re reward can you expect from God for all this that you're doing uh, for his people? Wow, uh, I can't tell God how to bless me. He has been blessing me. And, and this is one of the rewards in opening this door uh, for me to bring uh, the gospel through uh, television uh, into Kenya. Uh, he, he gives me rewards in many different ways. And so I always say, man give rewards, but man give awards, but God give rewards. And so with, I've been receiving a lot of uh, different accolades and stuff like that, but I know, you know, my reward will be sure in heaven. And, and, and for that, I give God glory. Indeed. Because I, I, I seek to continue to do the work, not to uh, so much uh, get the accolades or to, to, for man, to, for it to be seen of men, but for God's glory. Uh, at the end of the day, what we're doing is not to be seen by man or to, to be, you know, man to glorify us and all that stuff. I don't believe in that. I, I do believe that uh, you know, uh, if people really see that you're doing something good and choose to honor you, that's all within the scope of, of, of what God has mandated. And so I humbly say, I receive whatever accolades that God has allowed them to bestow on me. Uh, back in Ghana in 20, 
uh, 06, I was installed as a queen in, in Ghana. Uh, because of my humanitarian work in Africa. And so the, God has so many different ways of uh, allowing people to bless me and to honor me and, and, and to, to him be all the glory. Wow, wow, that's so interesting indeed. So right now so many Kenyans are watching you. They are wondering what kind of message are you having uh, to them. But I want this one should be uh, specifically to all Kenyan uh, gospel ministers kindly less than uh, one minute. I'd just like to uh, say a pleasant good morning to all of the Kenyan gospel music ministers. And I want to encourage you uh, to sing the gospel. Uh, do not try to dilute it. Don't try to cross over into any other secular arenas uh, to become famous. Because at the end of the day, only the things you do for Christ will last. I mean, the fame is for self-glorification and to gratify the flesh. But when you sing God and make God famous, he will make you famous. So, you know, what, what I'd like is to say is that remain humble in his presence. Pray fast. Seek the Lord. Without those elements, it's just flesh. And God is a spirit. So whatever we're doing must give God the glory first and foremost. And he will anoint you and bring you his presence. Praise God wherever you go. Amen, amen, amen. A very big shout out to the one and only Rev Doc AK Mori representing a a Toronto, Canada, and Jamaica as well. So thank you so much for accepting our invite this morning. We are really humbled and we hope that you can uh, we can do this again next time. Uh, God amen. willing. And there is our <laughs> wish, you, this sir. is our request. Yes. So right thank about you. now, our viewer, make sure you get to YouTube. Uh, under K. Morris, make sure you get to watch her songs, so inspiring indeed, and make sure to subscribe and uh, yeah, let's support uh, this gospel. And they gospel. can also uh, go to my music website, kmorrismusic.ca, and that's K-A-Y-M-O-R-R-I-S, music.ca, and the C-A is for Canada. So, and for K. Morris Foundation, they can find me at kmorrisfoundation.com. Wow, wow. So... You, you got it uh, well from her. So right about now, uh, playing on air is about by the one and only uh, K. Morris. Let's 